I'm Gavin Andrews. I'm a Darwin man, but inland Darwin, uh, rather than coastal Darwin. And so um, we're in an area which, in my mind, and in my cultural uh, way of thinking, was a pretty central to the broader Darwin mobs and, right? and I come, my country is more inland further into the high country into the um, um, from about here here being the Campbelltown area uh, up until the, the Natai Valley and Baragarang Valleys but my my country is the Natai through to the Plaho Pl country around here try not to give Western brand names to it, um, but uh, so from the headwaters of the Georges River country into the Natai, which is the Baragarang, um, Wallandilly rivers, which lends around into the Hawkesbury River. The knowledge is that it's part of contemporary discussion have been around forever and they will be around forever. The Western system fails to recognise it because they're not written down or there's no physical evidence of them or, and you've heard all those sorts of arguments and reasons that the Aboriginal people make that up or whatever the circumstances are. And they say, it's a pity that it's an oral record and it's not this and that. It's not an oral record, it's a record made up of memory, story, song, dance and practices, lifestyle. All of those things at once make your knowledge, whatever that may be comprised of. Not particular components, but that whole suite of things together as one thing make up your knowledge. So, how is it preserved? And I think as complex as that concept of knowledge is, is the complexity of the conservation of knowledge and the preservation and the passage of knowledge. And in our cultural practices, one pre-colonial, one acquired and earned or became worthy of the right to knowledge, being you know, act, given access to finding knowledge itself. Right? It wasn't spoon fed and given like a, a dictionary or anything like that. It was acquired through your behaviour and your who you were as a person and so on. And so and when you think about that, that's very clever because at no point in your developing life did you ever think that you were being denied and it was your right. So there was no resentment because you didn't know of its existence. Now, that's a primitive system. I think it's an incredibly intelligent system far more reaching when they built a library court at Alexandria and it got burnt down and whatever was in there got lost. And there's just a myth of the Library of Alexandria. All right, so which is the smarter of the two systems? Knowledge also was out there in what today you would call the public domain. It wasn't hidden, but what it was, was fragmented in little bits. No bit was ever complete, all right? So you might have some bits and pieces and the person next to you might have some other bits and pieces and you may have a couple of bits and pieces that were either the same or very similar and shared. And when you got together and got to know each other and talk to each other, you would come across that occurrence where you had 
knew the same stuff or knew bits of the same stuff and hence those two bits came together and instead of being two bits it now became another bit of knowledge and hence the process of knowledge gathering is about that ability of being able to share with others what you have and therein is built within our cultural practices the obligation of sharing and passing on. The process of knowledge gathering or becoming what people now, nowadays term a knowledge holder is one in which one becomes wisened by the sharing and the collection collection of, of knowledge in a much more holistic way than studying and becoming a doc, getting a doctorate or a PhD in, a, in medicine or something, you know, or one of the sciences or, or literature or whatever, uh, a super specialist. Okay. And I can sort of illustrate this because what I'm implying is that knowledge is out there. Knowledge is possessed by all of us in varying shapes and forms and to collect it or to, for it to gather it's a co coalescence of emerging rather than a collecting bits yeah? um, and therefore every one of us holds a degree or elements of the knowledge of our, our, our peoples and our culture. So every one of us, as a person, as a human being, is important to the collective wisdom of our society. <laughs>